What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another Pioneer video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Rakdos Vampires deck for the Pioneer format, piloted by Seth Manfield and the team of Channel Fireball at Pro Tour Karlov Manor where Seth Manfield ended up taking down the whole tournament, getting first place, 8-1-1 record in the Swiss and then 3 owing the top 8. There was also a few, uh, one other player, Sam Pardee, who ended up top 8-ing the event with this deck. And in even broader scale, the whole entire team, I believe, is at least 10 plus players managed to day two the event as well with this deck. So it looks like we have completely flipped the Rakdos archetype on its head and we're kind of drifting more uh, a little bit away from the more mid range strategy and we're delving into the vampires side of Rakdos. So, of course, before we get too deep into the deck list, talk about it, things like that. If you are interested in seeing more videos like this, uh, where I talk a lot about the modern Pioneer format and some longer form videos as well, please consider subscribing to the channel, ring notification bell, so you know when those videos get posted. I have a few links in the description down below as well. One in my Discord server, the other one to this deck list in particular. So if any of those interest you, follow the Discord link, join the server, you know, follow the deck, uh, download it, play it on Moto, things like that, because the deck does look like it's a lot of fun to play and is at least kind of an interesting kind of take on the Rakdos archetype. And of course, finally, on uh, Saturdays, maybe not this Saturday, but you know, coming up, we have a lot of episodes uh planned for the casual spikes podcast so i got a, a a playlist made up for that if you want to check out the podcast you know feel free to do so uh of course after watching this video because uh we need to talk about this deck we need to talk about rakdos vampires because uh this deck came out of nowhere it was kind of memed on and laughed at you know from you know a lot of players like oh you know vampires i think is kind of like one of those archetypes uh, you know uh where people just don't kind of respect it i think when we think of like the vampire archetype in conjunction with like standard and pioneer and things like that we we think of like sore and imperious blood lord you know the, and this is definitely like one of the better cards in the deck when we think of this we think of a few cards that players want to put in you know there was like a dusk mantle champion or something like that where a dusk legion champion something like that where you had to draw cards and lose life equal to the number of vampires they had in play and it was like a five mana four four so soren like on turn three could put this in you curve out one two three you end up drawing three cards you know and losing three life but you have like a ton of pressure on board at that point you know so that was kind of the thing people were doing with soren imperious blood lord then there was galta and maverin from the like march of the machines set where you know people were like oh you know like you could turn to play this and you know while that was like the idea was like the vampire archetype or whatever but like that really wasn't you know we really weren't doing too much like you could put other things into play but like you were trying to put galta maverin into play and then attack for like 14 on turn three so i think at that point vampires kind of got like this meme kind of like oh like the like an actual vampire's archetype really can't play sword imperious blood lord we have to do something like absolutely crazy which is like putting you know galta maverin into play on like turn two you know and of course like dies to you know the plethora of removal you know minus something like uh the burn spells from like phoenix and you know fatal push from like the other rakdos decks but now soren has found a new target to put into play and subsequently seem to dominate the pioneer format and that is the card vein ripper I, th I just wanted to try it. Okay, don't judge me. All right, so Vein Ripper is this new card from the Emerge of Karloff Banner set. It's a 6 mana, 6-5. You know, triple black and a 3 generic. For a flying creature, it has Ward, and the Ward is a sacrifice of creature, which is pretty interesting because it does feed into, you know, the next line of text on this card that says whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. So this is kind of like a ramped up version of Blood Artist where uh, Vein Ripper doesn't trigger for itself, I believe, but, you know, triggers for every other creature. Uh, so Vein Ripper is, you know, two parts, like, very big body that you put into play, but then also just like a super relevant, you know, static ability that kind of happens. So, you know, where we'd seen from like Chancellor of the Dross, where like eventually like you will like lose the game and you'll play it on turn four, or whatever, you know, if you get some, you know, Fable the Mirror Breakers flipped and you're able to copy them and everything, you know, you're able to deal tons and tons of damage. Vein Ripper gives you none of the downside of potentially losing the game. 
and has the upside of being able to be played on turn three where you can then start kind of attacking and getting in with like your Dusk Legion Zealots. You can sacrifice Blood Tithe Harvester, kill creatures, and then you drain your opponent for two and you gain two and then you kill their creature and then you gain another two and they lose another two. You know, and there's just some definitely different things you can do with this card. You know, it kind of swings races, you know, where your opponent maybe wants to attack, but they can't really attack because they're going to end up losing some of their creatures. And they might get in for six damage, but they're going to lose like two of their creatures so then like they're gonna lose four life and then you're gonna like end up losing two life when it's all said and done you know it just makes racing trading and everything super unfavorable for your opponent and on top of that too like just getting to play this like on turn six is pretty okay for the most part but obviously the kind of like broken part from soren kind of comes from just getting to put it into play with its minus three ability uh, and then with the other abilities on top of this too, you're kind of priced into playing a little bit more of a vampire strategy, even though you're playing 13 vampires technically, and then shielded, and then you're playing some amount of the, uh, uh, wow, why can't I find it? Mutavolt, which is four copies of it. It becomes any creature type, so it can become a vampire and stuff. And Soren can put counters on your vampires, you know, uh, give them lifelink death touch to force some pretty bad trades for your opponent while also gaining some life. And then also getting to sacrifice vampires and you just dome your opponent for three, gain three, or hit one of their creatures, what have you. Which, of course, kind of also feeds into Fane Ripper. It's almost like this card was made for Soren Imperius Bloodlord. And uh, that's like the main strategy of the deck. It plays like a mid-range deck. You have your Blood Tithe Harvester, which is a vampire. Of course, has some synergy with Vane Ripper, you know, and then, of course, Soren, you know, you can... Uh, end up making this thing, you know, into a 4-3 and, you know, get in there. You know, it is pretty aggressive like that. Eventually get it, like, out of range or, you know, what have you. Obviously not the main game plan. Honestly, Preacher of the Schism is probably a lot better of a target for a Soren plus one, but it is a creature that is decently aggressive, and then, you know, once you start putting counters on it and you're gaining 4, 5, 6 life with this, pretty good. Dusk Legion Zealot. Only have two of them in this deck. I think there were some that were playing like three or four copies of this card in their deck. But, you know, enters the battlefield, you draw a card, lose a life. It's essentially kind of like a Elvish Visionary for this deck, except that you lose a life when you draw the card. But you obviously have some upside synergies with uh, Soren and being a small creature, so Vayne Ripper can get some extra value from that. Preacher of the Schism is another card from uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, where, you know, it's a three mana, two, four with Death Touch. You know, so it's going to kind of be pretty decent in combat overall. And whenever it attacks, if uh, whenever it attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, you create a one-one vampire with lifelink. When it attacks and you have the most life or tied for the most life, you draw a card and you lose a life. So <clears throat> this is a way that you can attack. You can make some bodies or whatever, make combat a little bit harder. So if you're behind, you're going to make one ones with lifelink. You know, if you have a Vein Ripper in play, what have you, you know, these things are going to block pretty well because they're going to, you know, gain you a little bit of life, you know, stop a little bit of damage, and then they're going to drain your opponent, you know, or they don't attack and you're able to just key to keep getting in with uh, Preacher of the Schism, either because, you know, plusing with a, a Sora and Imperious Bloodlord, or just the fact that, again, like a 2-4 body is still very good on this card. More than likely going to require a double block to kill it which means that you're probably going to kill two creatures, which means that's three Vein Ripper triggers and getting your opponent for six and still getting the value from Preacher of the Schism. Uh, Shieldred, as a one of in this deck, not a vampire, but still uh, proving to be a very valuable card in the Pioneer format. I mean, this could have been like another Dust Legion Zealot, could have been a fourth Preacher of the Schism, it could have been a lot of things, but you know, at least Seth Manfield and uh, Team CFB seeming to kind of appreciate... Uh, what shielded the apocalypse can do and the fact that four mana four or five you know and you're going to gain life when you draw cards and then your opponent's going to draw cards and lose life you know pretty good when you're putting a ton of pressure on them with vade ripper preacher of the schism and so on uh the spells you have four thoughtsies two duress these knowing that the metagame was probably going to be a lot of you know phoenix was expected to be the biggest one and the control decks were going to be pretty popular having a well-timed thought seasons and duresses against them is going to be super huge when trying to just be aggressive and get in the red zone and try to end the game as quickly as possible it seems like this deck can turn on the jets maybe a little bit better than you know the other rakdos decks especially when you can turn three sword into vein ripper uh, which again was just like where this deck the power of this deck kind of lies in uh you have four fatal push one bitter triumph 
bitter triumph. Uh, you can kind of manipulate your life total in like this way. I mean, you're going to be gaining a ton of life with Vein Ripper, Shieldred, you know, potentially uh, Preacher of the Schism with, you know, making 1-1 one, one lifelink creatures. You know, you can kind of bolster your life total a little bit. So Bitter Triumph, you can kind of uh, play with the life a little bit more than having to kind of two-for-one yourself to destroy a creature. Planeswalker, Fatal Push, Amalia Combo, and a lot of the other threats from some of the other top decks uh, being played. You know, you want Fatal Push because it's just a cheap, efficient answer to those creatures. You have two Smuggler's Copters. Which is going to kind of help you stop from flooding out. You're playing 25 lands, you know, between Smuggler's Copter and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And of course, uh, getting potentially draw cards with like Preacher of the Schism. You're going to be able to kind of filter through a lot of these lands once you hit like your fourth, fifth, and sixth land. You know, you're going to be able to ditch those extra copies and hopefully end up drawing some spells. Uh, of course, Fable is one of the best cards in, in the deck. Even still, obviously, outside of, you know, Soren, Vein Ripper. Synergies, uh, Fable is just going to give you 2-2. It's going to help you ramp and, you know, get extra mana with the help of treasure tokens. You're going to be able to discard some of your cards that are bad in a matchup and hopefully draw some pretty good ones. Obviously, in conjunction with, like, Shielded, you're going to end up gaining a ton of life, what have you. Uh, helps you dig a little bit closer to get to Soren plus Vein Ripper or, you know, even just playing another Soren and be able to juice up Vein Ripper to get it out of, you know, the burn spells and stuff that are in the... Uh, is it Phoenix deck? Mana base, you know, pretty, I mean, pretty easy for the most part. You have uh, Black League Cliffs, you have Blight Step Pathways, Blood Crypt, uh, you have Cavern of Souls to, you know, again, like all, most of your creatures are vampires. You're going to have no problem sending black mana for a lot of these cards. So you're going to end up naming Vampire with like Cavern of Souls. Sometimes you'll name like Phyrexian or something like that for Shieldred, but you know, a lot of the time, like, Cavern of Souls is going to be named on Vampire, so you just have access to all these cards. Uh, you have Hive of the Eye Tyrant as, like, kind of like a flex land. You have four Mutavolt that synergize well with Soren and being able to either throw the land at your opponent or put counters on it and attack, and then they're going to uh, be a little bit harder to interact with, you know, with Sorcery Speed Removal. Uh, you have Soken Zen to make some tokens, and then you have Takanuma, which is going to be able to get back a creature or Planeswalker, so you can get back Vayne Ripper, you can get back Soren, any one of these other dorks as well. Sideboard, Duress, Rending Volley, Bitter Triumph, Damping Spear, Liliana the Veil, seeing an appearance on the sideboard, which is cool. Path of Peril, you have a Kalidus, which has been, you know, every time I saw it, it looked awesome. Uh, kind of is a little bad in conjunction with Vein Ripper, at least when it comes to your opponent's creatures, but you're going to be making 2-2s, two -two, so like you're probably going to be able to either kill your opponent or get triggers from like your own stuff. Krinko's Buzz Crusher against the Lotus Field decks because this card ends up actually killing Lotus Field, uh, even though it, it has Hexproof and everything. So pretty neat, uh, just a nice card to bring in. Of course, uh, brings the pressure, you know, 4-4 four, four Flying Trample. You know, is, is going to be pretty hard to beat. It ends up uh, running over, like, Arboreal Grazers and things like that. And you have four Leyline of the Void for the Is It Phoenix matchups and some of these other graveyard-based decks, you know, that we see kind of popping up. But, you know, mainly Leyline of the Void is going to be for that uh, Is It Phoenix matchup. So, yeah, that is the Rakdos Vampires deck. This is the deck that kind of took over the Pro Tour and then ended up converting it into a win by... Probably one of the, I won't say most accomplished players, but definitely I think a player that kind of gets underrated a lot of the time in Seth Manfield. You know, previously had won a Pro Tour, won a World Championship, stepped away from the game from the while, came back, tested with Team CFB, and then ended up winning the whole tournament. So safe to say he's probably still got it in him to, you know, maybe potentially make another run at Worlds. Obviously qualified, you know, with I think with the top eight, but then. Uh, like super qualified uh, by winning the event or maybe maybe you have to win the event to qualify either way you know we're going to see Seth Manfield at Worlds and he's probably going to be one of the most dangerous players on top of like a short list of other players who you are not going to want to see you know playing your matches especially like early on or in those winning ends and things like that so that's going to do it for me in this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Comment down below what deck you would want to see next. You know, if you're interested in trying the Vampires deck, I will have the deck list linked in the description down below, along with the Discord server as well. Go ahead and follow those links. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.